Welcome back to Kano Academy. Today we'll be covering the subject of economics by discussing inflation. In today's video, we'll focus on what is inflation as well as the different types of inflation and the causes of inflation, including some of the consequences of inflation, as well as several measures to combat inflation. Please watch until the end of the video because we'll also provide you with some valuable tips to help you ace your assignments, tests, and exams. So, let's get started. As an introduction, let us define what we mean by the term inflation. Inflation refers to a sustained and significant increase in the general price level over a period of time and at the same time, a decline in the buying power of money. There are different types of inflation. In this next section, we will look at the following four types, which are consumer inflation, producer inflation, an all-inclusive inflation, and hyperinflation. Let's briefly discuss each of these types, starting with consumer inflation. This is also known as CPI, which measures the rate of change in prices of goods and services that are typically purchased by consumers. This includes things like food, clothing, transportation, and housing. Producer inflation is another type of inflation. This is also known as PPI. This measures the rate of change in prices of goods and services that are typically purchased by businesses. This includes things like raw materials, intermediate goods, and energy. Another type of inflation is known as an all-inclusive inflation. All-inclusive inflation measures the rate of change in prices of all goods and services for both consumer and producer. This is a broader measure of inflation than CPI or PPI. The last type of inflation we will look at is hyperinflation. Hyperinflation is a very high rate of inflation, typically defined as an annual inflation rate of 50% or more. Hyperinflation can be very disruptive to an economy, as it can lead to a loss of faith in the currency, and a collapse of the economy. Inflation can be caused by various factors. In this next section, we will discuss these two factors, starting with demand pull inflation. This occurs when there is excessive demand for goods and services relative to the available supply. When demand outpaces supply, prices tend to rise. Another cause of inflation can be cost push inflation. This happens when the cost of production increases, leading to higher prices. Factors such as rising wages, increased raw material costs, or higher taxes can contribute to cost push inflation. There are numerous consequences of inflation. In this next section, we will discuss how inflation affects the following, starting with debtors and creditors. Debtors benefit because they receive money with a high purchasing power and repay their debt with money with low purchasing power. Creditors on the other hand may suffer due to inflation. Inflation also impacts on wage and salary earners. People with a fixed income will be able to purchase less as prices are rising. Another consequence of inflation can be felt by investors and savers. Assets with a fixed nominal value have a fixed return and lower purchasing power as prices increase. Furthermore, real value of savings also decreases. Inflation also affects taxpayers. In South Africa, income is taxed on a progressive system. Therefore, inflation causes what is termed as a bracket creep. This is when inflation pushes taxpayers into higher income tax brackets or reduces the value of credits, deductions, and exemptions. Bracket creep essentially results in an increase in income taxes without an increase in real income. Lastly, another consequence of inflation is the disruption of industrial peace, which is often caused by wage bargaining and usually accompanied by strikes and mass action. There are a number of measures that the government and policymakers can use to fight inflation when it gets too high. In this next section, we highlight three types of policy measures to be used to combat inflation. Let's start with fiscal measures. These are specific measures taken by the government and particularly the Minister of Finance 
Regarding taxation and expenditure, these measures can include the following, an increase in direct taxation, such as, personal income tax, which will help to decrease demand. An increase in indirect taxation, such as, VAT, which will lead to a decrease in spending because goods become more expensive. A loan levy, which will ultimately reduce disposable income, of consumers. The state could consider, cutting back on expenditure, by cancelling government projects like, roads, hospitals, and schools. The state could also impose surcharges, on imported goods. This will increase the price of these imported goods, resulting in many people being unable to afford to buy these goods. The country's reserve bank, and the government, can also apply, certain monetary measures, to curb inflation, including the following. The reserve bank can adjust the quantity of money, to meet the needs of the economy through, e.g., open market policy, thus maintaining a fine balance. The Reserve Bank can also curb inflation caused by excess demand by, reducing the money supply. The Reserve Bank can also apply moral pressure on financial institutions, to be more careful when granting credit. The repo rate is another tool, used by central banks, to manage monetary policy, and influence economic conditions. While the repo rate is primarily used to control borrowing costs, and stimulate or restrict economic activity, it can indirectly impact savings as well. When the central bank increases the repo rate, it often leads to higher interest rates offered by commercial banks on savings accounts and fixed deposits. This can make saving more attractive, as individuals can earn higher returns on their savings. The prospect of earning a better interest rate can therefore, encourage people to save more. Additional measures that can be taken, to combat inflation, include the following. Increase productivity. This is a long-term measure, generated through improved education and training, which allows more people to be employed, and ensures they are more productive. Price control. By fixing the price of certain essential goods, the government assures they remain affordable. Wage policy. The government can also take a decision to break the inflationary spiral, of increased wages and prices, by keeping the increase in wages below, or at the level of inflation. Stricter conditions for consumer credit. The government can also make it harder for consumers to get credit, in order to restrict their spending. Encourage personal savings. As indicated previously, the government can implement measures to encourage savings, for example, by cutting taxes on savings. The imbalance between demand and supply is corrected by increased savings, as people save more, and spend less. Relaxed import controls. The government and policymakers may also consider relaxing import control measures through tariff reductions, removal of import quotas, easing import restrictions, and entering into free trade agreements. Another measure to combat inflation is by using floating exchange rate. This is when prices are automatically adjusted to international conditions. Indexation. This is a policy of linking prices of items such as, wages, pensions, and mortgage bond interest rates, to price indices, in order to eliminate the effects of inflation. Before we continue. As promised, here are five quick study tips. Starting with, number five. Start studying early. Don't wait until the night before the exam, to start studying. Give yourself plenty of time to learn the material, so that you can absorb it properly. Number 4. Create a study schedule and stick to it. Break down the material into manageable chunks, and schedule time to study each day. This will help you stay on track, and avoid feeling overwhelmed. Number 3. Find a study method that works for you. Some people prefer to read their textbooks, while others prefer to take notes or watch videos. Experiment with different methods, until you find one that helps you learn the material effectively. Number 2. Take breaks. Studying for long periods of time can be counterproductive. Get up and move around every 20 to 30 minutes to avoid getting burned out. And very important, number 1. Get a good night's sleep, before the exam. This will help you be alert and focused, on exam day. Now back to today's topic. Just to recap, 
On what we covered in this video, inflation refers to a sustained and significant increase in the general price level over a period of time. This means that, on average, the prices of goods and services are rising, while the purchasing power of a unit of currency is decreasing. There are also different types of inflation. In this video, we looked at the following four types, which are consumer inflation, producer inflation, all inclusive inflation, as well as hyperinflation. We also learned the various factors that cause inflation, including demand pull inflation and cost push inflation. We also covered a number of consequences as a result of inflation, and also learned that there are a number of measures that can be taken to combat inflation, including fiscal and monetary policy measures that the government and policy makers can use to fight inflation. We also listed other measures to be considered. To understand more on this topic, please take time to re-watch this video. We hope we were able to provide more clarity on the topic of inflation. If we have, please let us know by leaving us a comment below this video. We would love to know what you have learned on this topic. You can also leave us a thumbs up to show your appreciation. Also make sure you like this video and take time to share and subscribe for more. Until we meet again, happy learning. From all of us at Kano Academy. Stay creative. Stay curious. Stay connected with Kano Academy.